All right, hello and welcome to another dev stream breakdown. So it's dev stream 68 and some things happen. Uh, some things that are more important to talk about than really anything that got fully announced. And the first thing is the Void Trader. So the Void Trader had like a week's lag behind, but will be two weeks in a row for those of you on consoles. And they said that he's seeking new goods, but I think that it might actually be a function of them not wanting the Void Trader on the same day as the dev stream because they don't want to deal with that shit in chat every week about him bringing garbage. Which, if he brought stuff that we always kind of wanted, that wouldn't be a problem. But whatever. Uh, I was really hoping something interesting was going to happen with the Void Trader. Guess nothing interesting is going to happen. So that's unfortunate. Also, apparently in 18.5 there are going to be multiple Warframes, and we know that there were like four in development uh, from the last dev stream, but we didn't know anything more specific than that. My prediction is going to be that one of them is an Umbra, and the other one is like an actual like new frame, which would be really nice. Um, hopefully maybe even more than that, that'd be kind of rad, uh, but I'm not holding my breath for that. <laughs> Kind of interesting, Kavats. So, Sheldon kind of outlined what two of the Kavat variants are going to do. <clears throat> and it, it, he was explaining it, and it kind of brought me back to my problems that I have with Kubros, because it's a lot in the same way. So, we've got Cheshire, which is like a luck theme, and Mirror, which is a like mitigation reflection theme, thus Mirror. So, for Cheshire, he laid out like... You would get a chance for it to just make make like a drop from an enemy rare, uh, or for your like gun to just reload itself automatically, or for other like little like percent chance type things to happen with your stuff. But none of that. That one in particular brought me back to a much earlier point, where it was, oh, Kubros don't have vacuum but they have cool things that I might use if they had vacuum. Kavats are literally going to be the same thing again. And while I'm probably going to appreciate having like adorable cats or whatever, they don't have vacuum, so I will never use them. <clears throat> hmm. Other powers for the mirror one though, for those of you interested in having cat, uh, is like to be able to like run around and just reflect bullets back at enemies and be able to just do damage mitigation stuff like damage mitigation on you and just things that are basically completely meaningless uh, and not something you really want out of a companion unless it is a, in addition to having vacuum. Weird how that works and how it will continue to work until they actually do something about it, which is unfortunate. So that's, that's kind of all of the bad news, is Kavats and the Void Trader stuff, except for one little little thing that we'll talk about. So Fusion, the way Fusion works right now is that you have all these mods and you collect a shitload of mods, and then you level up the mods that you want. So, it's really weird and confusing and kind of shitty how it works right now, because it's like you have to match polarities and do all this other kind of thing. So they're going to simplify it in a really smart, good way, by making it so you can take... Like, let's say you have 700 ammo drums, but you don't you don't need 700 ammo drums. So just take 700 ammo drums and convert them all into an equivalent core. So you take 700 ammo drums and convert them all into, like, common cores, which is way more valuable and gives you a lot more, like, mod points to kind of spread out and use however you want. So it makes things, A, simple and easy to explain, and B is an improvement to the system on the whole because you can always break down mods that you know you don't need. So like, I have like a level of every, like, let's say I have a level of every single ammo drum. That means any ammo drums that are extra on top of that, I would just convert convert all to common cores. Uh, and you'd be able to do the same thing for like power throw uh, and your uncommon mods and what have you. The interesting thing about this is what's going to happen with legendary mods because if you can say, buy multiple legendary mods from Borrow, and then be like, oh, well, I'll just convert one of these into a legendary core. That would be incredibly valuable. But also, I think, in terms of, like, a value proposition, for, like, how many ducats and credits you have to put in, 
is relatively fair. Because that makes... It, it makes it so that... Whereas 700 ammo drums are generally worth very, very little in the grand scheme of things, 700 common fusion cores are actually worth a reasonable amount, and it actually feels like you're always kind of making progress, even if you're getting duplicates, uh, as opposed to it only mattering once you reach that threshold of having hundreds of a mod, which is really important and I think is going to be a good change when they implement it. Super excited for that. Now, the last thing they kind of went over, and there was a, like a lot of like filler stuff like the new... Um, Nyx Collector statue, which looks really cool, but not really worth mentioning that much. Lots of weird shit happened this stream. Mission reworks. So I'm actually gonna... We're gonna talk about Sabotage first, because Sabotage 2.0, what they showed of it, I really enjoyed and liked. Uh, it's gonna... It's more towards the vein of being, like, Spy. And the way Spy is right now is, like, a really interesting game mode that has unique things going for it, and it has good rewards. So... Everything except for the rewards part on Sabotage, we saw and it kind of proved itself to be like, oh, well, this can be an interesting thing that I want to do, where there's going to be, like, multiple areas, like, you bring, like, these fuel cells and you, like, replace it with coolant and then, like, hack this, like hack it and freeze the system, do all kinds of uh, cool things like that. So, provided at, like, the end of all that, from, like, changing the mission type, you will also have a pool of mods that you will be able to get that will be good. Uh, provided that is in there, everything they showed off with the new Sabotage is great, and also, in addition to that, they showed off some new map changes, uh, and what, by that, what I mean is on your mini-map, you'll be able to see if enemies are alerted, uh, what direction they're facing, and all kinds of shit like that, which is essential. Essential to being able to keep your stealth modifier going, because you know what enemies have seen you and what enemies are in an alert state. And it will just make being a stealthy frame that wants to, like, build stealth modifiers way better and just just more clear, which is good. Because clarity is very important, and I think that's also part of what they were trying to do with the Fusion Core setup, and it's great. On the flip side of these mission reworks, so for Excavation, we had the proposed changes from, like, well, proposed more changes from Glenn to make it even worse than they already changed it to be and by that what i mean i have to kind of break down like what they did to excavation so excavation was like perfectly reasonable but it was like a it was a little too passive and i think in the patch notes the way they explained it made it seem like they were going to speed up how excavation works and it was going to be an even better game mode but they broke it on a fundamental level with how excavators drop and now they're saying that they're not changing it but they already changed it, so for anyone that knows what I'm talking about, excavators used to spawn in like an exact order down the mission that made a lot of sense and allowed your team to stick together because it's a co-op game. Now they spawn sporadically and need more power, so you're always running all over and never really optimizing. So unless you have an optimal team with like four different solo frames that can all solo an extractor, you're not gaining like the most benefit. And if you're all soloing an extractor, then you're not working together, which is the point of the game. So, they changed Excavation to be not worse, but less fun, and kind of, like, against the co-op nature of the game. You're kind of just picking people that can totally solo an Extractor and then letting them go do that while you solo an Extractor, which is the most efficient way to do that game, game type now. Whereas before, it was a lot more team-based and more fun, as you could pretty clearly see whenever we did the, like, two 10-hour streams of us just straight doing excavation for, like, 20 hours. And it was a good time that whole time. They've changed it since then, and it's not possible to have that, like, close teamwork anymore, which is very unfortunate. Uh, I do agree with all, like, the power changes that they made and stuff, with, like, you need more energy for the extractors, but more um, guys spawn in. Uh, and, like, the excavators come down faster. The problem is the way that they come down. They need to come down in that order that they were coming into before. Or else you are just... It, you spawn it five tiles away. So the most effective thing to do is just to be like, Oh, I, I mean, I know we, we started this mission together, but you're going to go essentially five tiles away where it's not reasonable that we're, they're, you're not working together. And it's just, just unfortunate. So... 
I would encourage people not to just be like, oh good, they're not changing excavation because they already changed excavation for the worse. In the big way. The micro changes are good, which is unfortunate. But yeah, uh, not a whole lot actually happened on the dev stream in terms of like actual news. Lots of vague things were said, lots of like things that don't really matter, like the Kavats. Uh, while I'm excited for cats, obviously they're not carrier. Something needs to be done there. Clearly a huge problem in the game. Uh, the Void Trader is whatever. I thought they were going to do something more interesting with that, but they're not. It's unfortunate. Positive side, the Fusion Core changes are amazing. Uh, and the sa new Sabotage looks fantastic. But them trying to dodge the bullet on Excavation, I think, is a little sour. Because that game mode used to be a lot more fun than it is right now. But that's been the dev stream breakdown. And, uh, oh, also, just here at the end, uh, I'm going to be streaming all Saturdays at 6 p.m. Uh, U.S. Central Time. So, uh, I'll put down below here some other times what that is in, like, I'll do, like, England. Then it'd probably be easier for those of you in Europe to convert that or whatever. And some, like, U.S. times so you guys can figure out what that is. Uh, but yeah, every, every Saturday now is going to be a stream. It's going to go from 6. It's going to be usually be at least 4 hours, but probably longer. Uh, a variety of games. Do the sorties on Warframe. You guys can come ask questions. Do all that kind of stuff. And I'll hopefully see you then. Later. <laughs>